boy west coast and we live in the building man how is everybody doing how is everybody doing man it is your boy west coast and we are live in the building man and i'm about to have a great great show today man i got a special guest man special guest on here by way of uncut cowboys you know i know i typically i technically have three of us on here usually have my guy landlord he's gonna be on here in a little bit and then i also have my guy htm who's under the weather right now so we're gonna make sure we keep him in prayers but, man, I got a mighty, mighty guest, someone I've wanted to speak with for a long time now, man. I've seen him floating around the stadium, floating around Dallas, and at training camp, you know what I'm saying? I've seen him floating around a little bit, and I've wanted to have the chance to talk to my guy, Tad Prescott. I wanted to speak to him a couple times, so, you know, it is a blessing and definitely a cowboy honor, definitely a cowboy honor to get you up in here right now. And I think I like my boy Lance. Well, I, I see him beeping in a couple minutes. But, yo, man, I'm going to tell you this right now. If you're looking to the my immediate right, there's a guy that kind of he looks like that. He looks like a, a little bit. I ain't gonna say more wiser, Dak, but that beard, that beard. If you listen to me, if you want to know what Dak gonna look like in about yeah about three four years when he get a little beard, here you go, right here to the right hand side, man. I got Mr. Tad Prescott in the building, man. We call him TP. What's up with you, man? What's up, my man? Thank you for having me on, bro. I truly appreciate it. Shoot, I appreciate you. Let me see if my guy landlord, if I can hear him. Landlord, can you hear me? Mike, yes, sir. Tag, can you hear him? Yeah, yeah. I can hear him. Oh, uh, look at that. My channels ain't look. live though, man. Give me one second. Give me one second. It's all good. Hey, we're gonna we're gonna screw me we gonna figure it out as we go. It's yeah, all good. We're I'll be right back. Right. Yes, sir. Hey, I'm gonna tell you, my, my cable company is owned by some Eagles fans, so every now and then they slip in there and they mess up the technicals and it just get real funny, dunny out there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yo, wow. While he figure it out, this is what I need y'all to do. I need y'all to go tell the nation, man. I need y'all to go tell the nation. Go tell the nation that TP is in the building, man. I need y'all to go tell the nation. I need y'all to share, 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 share. If you love the Cowboys, I need you to give your five shares. And I'm going to tell you this right now. If you believe in manifestation, manifestation, what does that mean? That means I say it, I believe it. If I believe it, I receive it. Hey, there's some folks in the world that have made some big old churches after that. You know, I'm not knocking it. You know what I'm saying? But I'm saying if it'll work for them, why not us? You know what I'm Real saying? Talk. So talk. you believe the Cowboys going to win that sixth Super Bowl this year on this side of the 2024. I need you to give us six shares. Please share it, share it, share it, share it with a hater, share it with a lover, and share someone that's telling you to stop sharing it with them. You know what I'm saying? Let me see if I got my guy here again. Landlord, you in the building? We good, man. It, it just it won't let me go live on that because you live already. So it's all it's good. All good. It, hey, it's all good. Hey, you know what? Sometimes you got to make and break and just get in there. You know what I'm saying? And just make it make it happen. And that's exactly what we're going to do. But, hey, we got some special people in the building also. Let me switch this up around real quick. We got some special people in the building. They're called my, some, some supporters. Let me shout out some people real quick. What's up with you, Tamika? Appreciate you. What's up with you, uh, Jameson Taylor? Appreciate you in the building. Uh, what's up with your Raymond Solace? Appreciate you. As I shout your name out, make sure you hit that share button, hit that star button. What's up with your Michael Trejo? What's up with you, my boy? And then we got about 190 people already up in here, so I can't shout all y'all out, but I want to <laughs> let y'all know I appreciate y'all for knowing, for for understanding the assignment. You know what I'm saying? I told y'all to keep your notifications live. When he say we gonna go, we gonna go. I don't give a damn if it's three o'clock in the morning. He hit me say West Coast. I got 20 minutes. We going live. Have your notifications on. Because we are going, you know what I'm saying? So, Landlord, give your introductions, man, and let's get right to it, man. What's going on, Landlord from Alabama, man? What's going on with the people? How you doing, Mr. Tad Prescott? What's going on, my man? Nice to meet you. Nice to talk to you. Nice to meet you, too, man. We got some um interesting stuff to talk about, man. How you doing? I'm doing well, man. I'm ready to see what you boys want to talk about, what y'all ready to get into. <laughs> first, off and for, first off and foremost, man, because... There, there be these crazy folks out here that be believing that, like, just because, like, you, your, your brother plays for the Cowboys, it means you, it means he's, he's a Cowboy fan, man. He's a Cowboy fan. He doesn't, he doesn't really. Let's, let's, let's just kill that right now. You know what I'm saying? So when people go kind of come in here and be like, yeah, but he's not. No. Let's kill that right now. I want to know, man. Cowboys, Green Bay, final moments, man. What was your, what was your thinking as a fan? I don't want to know, but I want to know as a fan, how'd you feel, man? Heartbreak. I mean, honestly, the same as all y'all felt, the, the, probably the same way I had been feeling for the first three quarters, just trying to figure out what was going on, where were the adjustments, uh, you know, where was the offense that we had seen, you know, the first 
17 games of the season. More importantly, where was the defense that we had seen the first uh, 17 games of the season? Exactly. And, you know, I talked about it. You know, like I said, I don't, I don't put anything on the players, you know, uh, unless you can pull up tape and see, you know, direct lack of effort. You know, I never call out a player. My true belief is as great of a Dan, as great of a coach as Dan Quinn is. I think he was already in Washington, man. I think he had already had his his keyboard. I think he already had everything planned out. And you know, I made a comment to some guys before. You know, you see all these coaches, especially the guys that are deep in the playoffs. You know, the Ravens, the 49ers. You don't think guys want to interview their coaches. You don't think there's teams out here that want those guys you know, for the success just as well as the Cowboys are having, but that they're having, but you don't see their coaches taking those interviews. You don't see anybody, you know, they telling them, wait, well, you know, I'll, you'll get me when the season's over. But for the second year in a row, we had Dan Quinn, you know, for whatever reason, trying to find his way out of Dallas. And I think that's where we got hurt the most. True, true. I, I do my sentiments exactly. When I said I had my conspiracy theories, you know, my spider senses was tingling. I said I wanted to figure out when exactly our – the other teams available like able to contact the coaches yeah. like during season i want to know exactly when is that time that threshold right there gonna tell me a lot is that you know the same amount of time when when our team start getting bad all of a sudden you know our defense yeah. start getting that's bad all of a sudden that's what it looks like because again like you said you've seen the last two years that it's oh, Dan Quinn's taking meetings before, you know, the game. Dan Quinn's here taking the meeting before the game. And then, like you said, our team gets on the field and we're expecting this defense that we saw all year. And they're just, they're just not there, you know. And again, the guys can only, you know, they can only put, out, put the plan on paper that the coaches give them. So, like I said, I don't know what Dan Quinn was doing. And, and the biggest red flag of it all was for Jordan Love to come on Mike's podcast and tell him, like, bro, we knew we were going to be able to do this against y'all. We looked up and saw what y'all had and knew we were going to be able to do this. So I know we had injuries at the linebacker position that forced some guys to play in positions that, you know, maybe not their first position. But Dan Quinn's too good of a coach to just let us go out like that. Like I said, 42 in the playoff, that's just – that was tough. Yeah, and then you got to think like this in that same interview. He's like – Jordan Love's like, uh, didn't you guys have, like, DBs playing – Linebacker, linebacker. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, he, like and he chuckled it like he chuckled it like you know how when you like when you when you like like bro you let who cut your hair <laughs> like <laughs> yeah did what like well, don't you little, know better and i think that maybe at some point like i said when layton when layton went down with that injury we maybe should have went right then and started trying to see if we could find a true linebacker replacement for him but i mean like i said those guys had held up really well without Leighton in the lineup. So I don't, like I said, I don't think it was a, a necessary push to go get something. I truly think, I think our coach was, like I said, I think he was in Washington. I sit on that one. Yeah, man. And I'm going to tell you, it's crazy because, like, you know, I knew that this, you know, that game, in because, you know, a lot of fans, the, the typical Cowboy fan, they watch with the camera watch. And the camera watches the ball and the quarterback, right? So everything yeah. is always judged and based off that. And it's like, I think 90% of fans in America that are Cowboy fans forget that Dak Prescott was down seven points when he got on the field, when he when his feet touched the ground. Before his the cleats first, touched the ground. Yeah, <laughs> before there was even a, a blade of grass that dirtied up them Nikes. I think he had some Jordan 1s on, high top joints. Before they even got dirty, Dak was down seven. <laughs> <laughs> So it's like, and it's like, this is what I always try to explain to fans. are like, yeah, but there's no excuse. There is, yeah, you're right. There is no excuse. But I tell you this, when your team is only giving up uh, 17 and a half points at home, you're not practicing being down seven in the first quarter coming out the gate. That's not something you're, I mean, should you be, should you be equating for everything? Yes. Yes, Lord, you should. Yes, Lord, you should. Let's just be real. Nine games at home, teams have not done this to you. So it's like, like the, it's like Mike Tyson say, everybody got a plan until they get what? Until they get punched in the face. In the mouth. <laughs> and then you say nine games, but I mean, I mean, yeah, the nine games and the 17 point, but I mean, what, what did that loss killed? How many straight home victories for us? Bruh, I think it was like 13. 16 straight, I believe. Something ridiculous. It was something crazy. Like you said, so not only that, like you said, not only expecting to come out down down seven, but you to come down seven in a in a building where you don't allow people to score. You know, you know, you had those scripted plays. Who who knows how much of those plays got changed from going in saying, you know, we're pretty sure we're gonna get them off the field. We're gonna be able to run this, get the ball moving with TP like this, and then like you say, West Coast, you come down seven. Who knows how many of those plays got scrapped off the playbook? Who knows if we stick stick with where we were going or how that changed how the momentum of the offense was moving. Yeah, I think everybody was kind of in a state of shock at that point, though, you know, because nobody yeah. expected the game to go that way. 
And I really do feel like Green Bay kind of caught us off guard. But at the same time, we was all expecting a better team to prevail out the wild. Like we we just sitting there waiting. Like man, we we got a we we did get a couple of how many? We scored like ten points in a row, and then we got closer, and then the defense gave up another touchdown. So it was just a downward spiral of bad football back to back consecutively that just crippled us in that football game. And I'm and I'm gonna tell you the thing that really really showed where that defense was man is these touchdowns were not like hard work touchdowns bro like they the weren't work. contested yeah these bro, guys were standing wide end. open besides the ones from aaron jones running in i mean bro the tight end when the tight end when the when the when the tight end did that crazy one on the right hand i just was like bro i'm out <laughs> yeah, that, that luke musgrave touchdown that was a rookie tight end for one and then it was the most open reception of the whole NFL season. Like, nobody else – no, like, literally. That was literally the most open receiver of that year. That's and crazy. These are too great for that. They too, not, yeah. They're not even good. They're too great for that. Like I said, the way De'Ron Glenn was playing, we all know Stephon Gilmore's car probably going to be in the Hall of Fame one day. I mean, like I said, that they don't do stuff to us like that. You can't beat us one-on-one -on -one like that with these crossing routes they're running. That's what it looked like, like they was playing Madden – on all pro mode, just running crossing routes, and at the end of the day, somebody was butt naked waiting to catch the ball. Yeah, so that's right up. That right up alone did have me looking at DQ with the side eye. I can't, I can't lie. I, I had my antennas up after that because I just don't see how you could be that bad. Like for us to get beat a couple of times, that's normal. Like everybody's gonna give up a, a little something, but for us to get consecutively beat, just that was just bad, man. Nobody didn't even want to watch that. So, you know, I ain't going to lie. After the game, immediately after the game, I was like, I was mad at everybody. I was like, screw everybody. I was mad at Dak. I was mad at everybody. I was still mad at Zeke. I was mad at everybody. So, yeah, I was mad, bro. I was, I'm, I'm a Cowboy fan. I'm a real fan. So, I had to sit back and watch the playoffs play out a little bit, to be honest. I had to watch it play out because – I'm a big Dak fan, man. Dak is my guy. So when I seen the way the game was playing, I'm like, man, Dak got to do something. Like, we, we got to figure it out. You see what I'm saying? But that was – once I seen the way the rest of the playoffs played off, I felt crazy then because I'm like, man, what I was asking for Dak, I did this live on my channel. Like, everybody seen me go through these ups and downs with this Dak Prescott and the way we performed in that game. So I once I seen how the whole playoffs played out, I'm like, man, I'm asking Dak to do something that we ain't see Patrick Mahomes do. I'm asking yep. Dak to do something that we didn't see Lamar Jackson do. <laughs> I really had to take a step back and just be like, man, maybe I was a little too emotional on that one. Because I was mad at everybody. I'm not going to lie. Like, I was like, man, screw all of this. Because everybody should have been mad. That was a disrespectful, distasteful loss right there, man. Yeah, like you said, everybody should have been mad. Everybody was mad, bro. Like you said, I mean, you sit through a 49ers loss, you're like, damn, that's a tough one. If we could have done that, you know, his first, his rookie year, the Green Bay loss, you know, that was probably the most exciting game I've been to for him, period. But like you said, for this game, it's like, like you you felt it. It's like the moment that the ball got kicked off and, and things weren't going the way for the, the way they needed to or the ball wasn't bouncing our way. It's like, man, this is, this is not going to be good. You just sat there and knew yeah. this is going to be something bad to watch. And then, you know, you get all the hit, all the shit and people, are, you know, it's finally starting to come out. Like, guys got to realize, man, we had 42 put on us. Like, even if we scored when we had the ball, like, even if we score in all of our possessions, they still outscore us. Like, we still lose that game. And that's why I, I look directly at Quinn. Like, you just said, like, so they're going to get us every now and then, but where were our adjustments? Like, you're too good of a coach. We've seen you come out here and goose egg. Good teams, great teams. We saw when you had weeks and weeks of preparation for the Giants, whether whether uh, whether you want to consider their season good, bad, or whatever. But when he had that preparation coming in week one, like you saw what this defense was able to do. People were looking at Dak like, we might not even need you this year, Dakota, because this defense is going to be so damn good that you just have to – like that's what they were saying. You just don't have to mess up. They were really telling Dak this year that all you have to do is not mess up because this defense is that good. And then it goes in, and these guys really together on both sides of the ball. This is one of the first years where you truly saw complimentary football, where you saw the defense take this ball away and Dallas go score. You saw Dallas go score, and this defense get hype enough to put a shutdown, where when it came to that playoff game, we had none of that, none of it.
Yeah, and I'm gonna tell you this right here. Like, I think it's a testament because I was in the building for that game, and I think it's a testament to that uh, of to who four is to this nation is, bro. Regardless of the score, I was just like, at some point, Dak is gonna do something. Dak gonna do something. Yeah. That's that's what was so disappointing. I'm up there like, man, Dak gonna figure it out. He gonna make a play. He gonna do something. I, 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 so, yeah. bro, like, I just like I like, and I'm gonna tell you this right here. When you can, when you can have that in a player, a person, in a professional sport where these are the best athletes. These are the these are not even the best athletes. These are the best among the best. You know what I'm yeah. saying? They still got starters and in second strings. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When you can have that amount of faith in someone, that is a different type of talent level. And I'm going to be honest with you. You as a fan have recognized that Dak is different. Why? Because if you didn't, why would you feel that way? Now, I'm going to tell you what it is because I'm going to tell you this right here. And I can almost guarantee that most Cowboy fans, at least 90% of Cowboy fans, felt that way, right? The only problem is when Superman isn't able to go into a, ca- and go into a booth and come out and save the world every single time, there are some of us who are rational off and be like, dang, but he did serve us that one time. Yeah, you, know you, you ain't going to yeah. win them all. Yeah. yeah, like you you can't. Even the Avengers got lost there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if I'm not yeah. saying, Thanos lost. I mean, Thanos won for a whole movie. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, you know, fans, they don't know. How to, I mean, and I get it, man. I get it. America's quarterback, you know, all the faith being, you know, all, all I, I totally get it. But it's like, I think fans like, you know, subliminally, they do actually believe that Dak is that dude. Because if you do not believe that he's dude, how could you have those expectations? I was going to say, you can't demand greatness from something that you feel like ain't good. You see exactly. what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey man, I'm, I'm just sitting here letting y'all spit facts. Y'all, y'all preaching right now. I, I'm just love it. I might go take some of what y'all say to bring it down to my homeboys. Let them hear it. Because but I mean, because I mean, this is my because thinking about the, the thing ahead, is, play. bro, it's it's not that the expectations of him have fallen, and it's what has happened is guys like Pat Mahomes, as great as he is, he ruined the NFL because he won a Super Bowl in his second year because in his second year starting because he won an MVP in his first year starting. You saw guys like Lamar, although he hadn't won the big game yet, you saw him win an MVP in his second year. So it's come now that that's the expectation. You know, the expectations of the Drew Brees, the Peyton Mannings, the Tom Brady's waiting on these guys to develop and, you know, giving them a few years to come along. That doesn't happen anymore. I mean, Dak, honestly, Dak and Matt Stafford are the last of that breed. I mean, they're the last of those guys that truly were among those guys coming out of college that was like, okay, let's let this guy sit, let's let this guy develop, let this this guy lead. Now it's like we're drafting a franchise guy immediately to come start, and if he doesn't win us a Super Bowl, a playoff game, or qualify for an MVP in his second year, then he's ass. And we saw that with Justin Fields, and Justin Fields is going to go to to Pittsburgh and learn so much under Tomlin, learn so much under Russell Wilson that when we see him again, people are going to be like, damn. That's what it's supposed to look like because it is. You don't have a Patrick Mahomes in every draft. We've only seen one pack. So that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, and that's where it's gotten ruined is that everybody sees how, I mean, I mean, damn, look at his trajectory. He's a walking Hall of Famer, and he's only been in the league six years. But that's where everybody sees is that his six years, his three Super Bowls, his two MVPs, and they expect that every franchise quarterback is capable of that. And that's what I tell them. If you look at Dak's nine, eight, going into nine years span in the NFL, there's been four quarterbacks to win a Super Bowl in that time frame. But we don't hear shit about the other guys that aren't getting there or whatever. It's just the America's team guy. He needs to be moved on from. He can't get over the hump. But everybody else is constantly being elevated over him. But he keeps winning. He keeps doing and elevating himself. Like you said, having those expectations that Dak's going to do something because he is that guy. He is a franchise quarterback. He is a top five, top tier quarterback in this NFL. Hey, and I'm going to tell you this like this. I always use this example. It's like people, are, you know, I ask someone who's a better cook, Big Mama. Or Wolfgang Puck, right? Mm-hmm. I figure like this, right? Wolfgang got he a, he a good cook. He got restaurants all over the world, right? But he also got the finest instruments. He got the best meats. You know what I'm saying? The best seasonings. He mm-hmm. cooking with more than he white boy. But he cooking with more than eleven herbs and spices. You dig? Like he got yeah. them all. You know what I'm saying? He got you know he, he got the little spindle. We can spin it. You know what I'm saying? It's all the little. You know what I'm saying? He got he got all that. You know what, you know what Big Mama got? She got butter. She got sugar, she got some eggs, and possibly a little salt if she needed. And, and guess a what? That's and it. a stove. <laughs> and guess what? That cake is going to come out just as good. Now, my question is this. Who's the better cook? 
One would say, well, Wolfgang is a better cook. I would be like, well, dang, I think she's a better cook. Why? Because what if you gave what if you gave Big Mama Wolfgang stuff? Mm-hmm. And what if you and, and listen to me as a Cowboy fan? I don't want to find this out. I don't. Why? Because yeah. I'm the quarterback. You know what I'm saying? So no, I don't want to find out what would Dak look like in an organization that but you can't. You can't support. say that Dak only got some eggs and some potatoes over here. I mean, Dak has <laughs> Dak has. Some you do got. He got. I mean, he had more. He and he had more. He had more to work with this year than Pat had. So I mean, and, that, and we saw what Pat do. But that's where I say Pat it had a defense. You know. Yes, that's yeah, what I'm Pat, Pat had a defense. We, and we have a defense. The <laughs> difference with Pat's defense is Pat's defensive coach was locked in. Pat, Chris Jones and all them boys, because of the coaching staff, because they knew what they were doing, was locked in. Again, Dan Quinn was just off somewhere doing his thing. Like I said, <laughs> I mean, honestly, would you really line up player for player? And, I, I mean, we saw how great the Chiefs did in, in the playoffs, saw how great they did in the season. But player for player, do the Chiefs have a better defense than the Cowboys? Player I say, for player. I say like I know. This. I'm saying player for player, no, but I will say this. They have the ability to stop the run, which I value more because the Cowboys, for whatever reason, are oblivious to stopping the run. Like we just we didn't value it's Dan Quinn. And I'm gonna tell you this right now. I say if I'm go on Dan Quinn, because bro, you're gonna have to ask me this question some point in your life. How are you a defensive tackle line guru? Who don't value linebackers? Like I don't under I didn't I never understood that. And I'm gonna take that's and I'm gonna be honest with you. That's what I was actually saying. As far as, I wasn't actually talking about like the players because I think uh, the I think honestly when you look across the board, the NFL the talent is pretty fair. You know what I'm saying? The NBA is is lopsided. It's crazy. You know what I'm saying? But the NFL yeah. for the most part I think is pretty fair. But what it really really goes down to is the willingness of these organizations. If Pat Mahomes loses something bro they're Johnny on the spot and I, one thing I love about the Chiefs they're not gonna care like listen to me the Chiefs they love their backups but you know what their backups work out with them every day so you know what they say we don't trust our backups we need <laughs> better players we need better players you know what I'm saying yeah, that's the only thing I'm saying well I don't think we we trying to say that Dak don't have talent because we know he got talent but what I will say is it seemed like it's times well you know we might lose a player to and the organization just sit on their hands and don't do anything about it. Like, this year is a prime example. Like, just imagine if we had an aggressive GM like Howie Roseman. Like, we ain't got to put Dak on another team. Hey, be careful. The last time I, I did, it, Howie uh, was crazy. I'm I got, just saying. I, I was listening to me. I was literally about Tag. Look. <laughs> Listen, hold on, hold on, hold on. He the professional blogger over here, right? Look yeah. at him just making mistakes, right? Nah, I'm just it's saying. Been, look, we didn't want to put – we didn't want to put Dak on another team. So how about you put another GM over here? You see what I'm saying? Just an aggressive player. I mean, an aggressive GM. Somebody that's going out to go deal with the uh, free agents and stuff like that. Like, we don't see that in Dallas. We don't. We we too sedated for some free agents. That's a problem. We've seen it once, and that was that was the year we went and got Amari. That was, that was a big move for us. That was a big grab they went and got. And like I said, I mean, I do – I did like the Gilmore in the Cooks pickup last year. Like I said, I, yeah. I wish they would have re-signed Gilmore. I don't know what's going on with that or, or why not. But like I said, the one time we saw the big move was with Amari. And, and, and I'm with you. Like you said, I, I mentioned it. When Van Der went down, we should have been looking for linebackers. I mean, we, we have been. I mean, honestly, like I said, if we have DBs filling in that role, I understand they're doing great. But like you just said, that when it comes to playoffs, you have to be able to stop the run. And, and Aaron Jones proved that against us. Like I said, we could not stop the run with whatever personnel we had on the field at any time. So, yeah, when he went down, we should have gotten one. But, I mean, like you said, you can't expect it because we've seen it. Like I said, I've been here I've been here eight years, nine years now. And like I said, it's not anything that we see. They, they believe in the way they, they draft. They believe in building from, you know, their practice squad and so up. So, I don't I'm, – I'm not surprised anymore. You know, I don't have the expectation that I'm going to – like I said, I was shocked this year that Derek wasn't brought into the building, especially when you hear him say that he wanted to be in Dallas, when you hear Derek Henry say that he wasn't even called by Dallas. That's what mm. kind of shocked me a little bit. But like I said, other than that, you know, I'm, I'm not shocked anymore. I don't have any expectations that I'm going to find big free agents because I've seen how they work, and I know that they believe in the way they draft. A lot of this reminds me it, – uh, it reminds me of, like, old way of doing business like blockbuster 10 years ago blockbuster a movie theaters you know they had the opportunity to buy a stake in netflix in the streaming industry they ain't believe in it though yeah where's blockbuster at now <laughs> like and that's and that's what i say about the cowboys it's like you know 
we we have our and I'm gonna tell you it's it's a it really shows you the power of the Dallas Cowboys because we are really the only sports you know organization that really says forget what everybody else is doing even if it is doing it right we're gonna do it our way and I always tell people the thing that sucks about Jerry is when he does it his way he sells more jerseys <laughs> so it's like but I, but and the thing I got the, the question I got for y'all because I mean I'll be honest with y'all like I mean y'all y'all kind of called me out on it in the beginning like I said I've, I've only been a cowboy fan for nine years I mean I'm be honest with y'all like I was one of the ones that hated the cowboys like I said when that got drafted by the cowboys I told him I won't wear the star until you're the starter I thought I would have a lot longer than I did but you know ever since then I am a diehard cowboy still no football history so when did Jerry's way become not going after these guys? Because Jerry won Super Bowls going to get Deion Sanders. He won Super Bowls going to get Charles Haley's. I mean, in the past, you saw him pick up got multiple guys. I mean, that's how we got a Pac-Man Jones. That's how we got these players over here. So when did his, his way become not going to get these guys? Because if you've asked me this 20 years ago, what's the Jerry Jones way? It had been being aggressive in free agency. So when did it become the Jerry Jones way to not be aggressive? Steven Jones took full command of when I I mean I mean I'm gonna tell you this right here. The More Steve, command probably. Of anybody that says hello like this, you know what I'm saying? He gotta get that hair right first. Anybody that say, man, I'm just saying, man, you gotta be careful, bro. You got you got to be careful. You know what I'm saying? Steven Jones, he that different type of sneaky. <laughs> He's just that deep. Like I like listen to me. I'm a I'm pretty good in these streets. I'm a good salesman, man, but I see Steven Jones, I'm walking the other way, man, because I just feel like he's going to get me, you know what I'm saying? Because, listen, this is one thing I will say about Steven. He has created, a, or not even just Steven, the, the business of the Dallas Cowboys. We are in a performance-based business, basically meaning if you don't win, the fans don't come to the games, you don't sell tickets, nobody gets paid. That's how it's typically set up for everybody, right? You don't win games, you, fans don't come to stands, you don't make no money, you don't, it's just how it works. The Dallas Cowboys, no matter success or, or lack of success, ticket prices are going up. Yeah. And this is something I said. This is something I've been asking everybody because we brought up the Chiefs. And after I say this, I want to uh, actually a different, kind of go in a different direction. But I want to ask this right here. I've always said this right here. If you were to take the Dallas Cowboys' success over the last 10 years and money and altitude and everything that they've done, success over the last 10 years, then take the Chiefs' success over the last 10 years, the money they've made, fans they've made, and the success they've Super Bowls. And you had Jerry Jones ask him which one would he take. To a degree, I still feel that despite the Super Bowls, he would still take the Dallas Cowboys. But does the, does the Super Bowl victory get you more money? That's what you would think. It seems like it, yeah. <laughs> that's so that's what I, I mean, that, no, that's the only place I get confused with, and that's where I, I truly like – that's where Jerry gets me to truly defend him because when people are like, Jerry Jones doesn't want to win because he only cares about the money. I'm like, I get what you're saying, but if he cared just about the money, the Super Bowl would be the only priority because you would think when the Super Bowl again, especially in, tw in the 2020s, 2000 area period, social media, you win a Super Bowl in social media, you win a Super Bowl in Dallas, Texas. Oh, like you said, you could just put NA on your ticket prices and tell us what they are when you get to the door. Because they still gonna pay them to get in to watch the Dallas Cowboys last year's Super Bowl champs. Yeah. I I was just thinking, um, it gotta be kind of crazy to just, you know, you his brother, so you just wake up. I get tired of seeing people talk about that. So I could just yeah. imagine you waking up and seeing this uh publication this publication this media source this media source always got something to say negative a lot of the times about that press guy how you how you deal with that type of stuff man so truly man the the credit and i'm sure y'all hear that give the credit to our mother for so much the credit also in that goes to our mother because like growing up Dak didn't start off as a quarterback and so i played defense our brother jace played offense Dak actually played defense because the favorite thing for our mom my mom said the favorite thing to watch her boys do is hit someone okay. and the worst person to talk about the quarterback on any of our teams was our mother our my man my varsity quarterback as much as my mom loved him off the field she would give him hell on friday nights i mean just <laughs> hell 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 to the point that when it became Dak's turn you know she kind of got humbled a bit and she sat down and told me like, baby, you just gotta realize like people are going to talk. I'm firsthand copy of that. And then, so that's where I've gotten. As long as they keep it football, 
man, everybody's entitled to their opinion. I, I'll go back and forth with you. If you want to keep it civil, you start going to go crazy that I'll back off of you. But and you can say whatever you want as long as you keep it football. It's when they start going outside the realms of football, getting personal with it, especially for those like, I know you don't know us. That's where I like my little my little angry bug goes in. But <laughs> man, as long as long as they talk football, they they're what they're, they're welcome to share their opinions with me, man. Well, shoot, man, I got a I got an opinion that kind of kind of went crazy, man. And shout out to everybody that watched the video, man. I I did two videos. I did two videos. Uh, one immediately after the loss of the game, I told the Dallas Cowboys you had to do one or two things. You had to either decide you either go in all on on deck or you need to go in all on with the head coach. As of right now, the Dallas Cowboys have done neither because both of them are still in a one-year deal. Crazy. <laughs> Crazy what's happening in, what is this, April 10th, 2024. Um, the second thing I made a video on was, you know, after I saw, you know, my, my starting center who, I, you know, it's crazy how when you lose a guy, you just start missing him, man. Like, <laughs> Like, I was I'll, always a fan of B.I.S. I really I'm was. I'm a fan like, of him I think, now. <laughs> I think I had higher expectations for him when, when, when I saw him being drafted out of Wisconsin. You know, I think, and I think that's what a lot of people got. When they saw him coming out of Wisconsin, they expected Travis Frank. I mean, you yeah. know, yeah, Travis Frederick. And, I mean, again, that man's a Hall of Famer. Like, even with his career being cut short, he's probably going to make the Hall of Fame. So, again, it's, the, it's that bias, West Coast. It's that we saw we had greatness. Like, we had true greatness. And we tried to replace him with what we thought was a carbon copy of him. And even though he did well, he's not Tyler. I mean, he's, you know, he's not Travis. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's that's some big shoes to fill, unfortunately. Yeah, but uh, like you said, man, I I, I hate that. You know, we lost him. You don't know what you got till it's gone, though. You know, but how you feel about going into this season with Dak got to replace forty percent of his old line this year, man? That's that's kind of crazy. Yeah, it is. It is crazy, but I mean, I know, I know he can withstand it. Again, I watched my little brother. No disrespect to them boys, I love them. I talk to a lot of them, but I watched my little brother play. You know, SEC at Mississippi State. You know, he had to see Alabama. I'm sure who you're a fan oh, of. Yeah. Oh LSU. yeah. Oh yeah. Roll tight. Uh, so you know, he's had <laughs> he's had some O line deficiencies before, but I mean, he still has a Hall of Famer in Zach Martin on the right side. Uh, Tyler's, it, I mean, I, I, I bow down to Tyler because when they first took him out, I was like, oh, I don't know if I like this kid in safety. Man, that dude is an all pro. So, you know, uh, Terrence still, you know, he's working. You know, he's just got to get stronger, get back in those drops. So he's going to have that right side. But as long as we can figure out this center and this, and this left tackle, I mean, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe they try to slide Tyler Cook back to his original position at left tackle. Or maybe they try to find a guard in the draft. So, you know, it's just going to be something that we have to play out and see because, I, I mean, as much as it's going to affect the quarterback, Dak is such a smart quarterback. He makes such great reads at the line that he can kind of get away from that. It's going to play more so, I think, into the run game, a run game that we were kind of missing last year. So I think that's the biggest part right now is that not only do we have to replace 40% of the line, we also have to replace, you know, 50% of our backfield because as right now we only have one running back on our team. True. Yeah, and it's crazy, and it's like, you know, if you were if you weren't, if you were just some, you know, if you were a salesman for Dak, i say, damn, that's – that's a good point to bring up because <laughs> everything that you're saying right now, you know what that's called? Value. That's called value. And that's created value. Why? And and that value is and it's crazy, too, because like the Dallas Cowboys, we are not the NFL prevents it from being like Golden State where you can have, you know, this ridiculous first string and then have this backup, you know, that's, you know, that's that this this that's also just as good as your first string. You know what I'm saying? Yep. You know, well, that's at least how that's how Golden State was when I was watching the NBA. I don't watch it no more because the NFL is is every day of the year now. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But you know, there's always gonna be a diminishment of talent between the starter and the backup, and it's like it is crazy to me how that does not like scare the living hell out of the Dallas Cowboys because it's like as a player on a football team, I knew, hey, the backup quarterback, that's my homeboy. But I know if 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 I ain't gonna say if my boy Danny was playing, we was not in we was not in good shape, man, because we had so much faith in our starting quarterback. And it's like I made up my last video I was telling you guys about is, you know, I made this video, it was kind of a crazy take, man. And some people kind of gave me some backlash, but I, I was kind of one of the first people that came out and said, man, I didn't feel what, what the Cowboys were doing with this team that Dak should just instantly run down there and just sign. Because I feel that like, you know contracts are like they're like marriages you know what i'm saying it's like yeah she's marrying him but him's also marrying her you know what i'm saying so it's like 
you know, I'm marrying because you got to think when you sign a contract and I'm always thinking this, the expectations, how do the Dallas Cowboys treat players when they're not able to hit the expectation, regardless if it's injury or regardless if it's like, you know, the player just kind of just had a down year. Some organizations, you get an injury. You know what? They'd be like, you know what? Don't trip. We're going to give you a year. You know what I'm saying? We're not even, not even, not even we're going to give you a year. We're not even going to start your week one. We're going to give you a couple months to just ease yourself in there. You know what I'm saying? Why? Because they're, they want to make sure that that long investment is there. In Dallas, you have it. And I'm going to tell you, you, you brought up a really good point, Tad, because this is a culture shock. This is a culture change, I would say, in Dallas, because you are starting to see it, players that are, be injured get injured, come back, come back early, and then still have those lingering things. And then guess what? Look how the Cowboys treat those guys those following years. You know what I'm saying? So it's like if I'm if I'm Dak Prescott and I'm seeing all these things going along, I'm also telling myself, do I win? And I know fans don't want to hear this, but, hey, this is the human side of the actual sport you guys play. You know, like fans, I think sometimes a, a player is only human when they get hurt, like realistic. That's the only mm -hmm. time – that they see that they feel a player's human. But this is another human side and is when they have to make these contracts and when they do these things. So it's like if I'm Dak Prescott and I know I've seen the Cowboys see, sign other players to, to contracts and for whatever reason, the Cowboys don't create a team or whatever this is, they're not able to hit those expectations. Man, the Cowboys are, they're vicious, bro. And I know the, the league is like that, but the Cowboys are vicious, man. So, so okay, I'm just trying to stay with you. So, are you are you more upset that the Cowboys, when they're dealing with an injury, they don't look to immediately try to replace, not replace that player, but, you know, find help for that player in free agent, maybe see, especially if it's a long injury until that player gets back? Or are you upset because you think then that Dallas unfairly treats them once that player has been injured? What I'm saying, I'm saying like this, there's no empathy for the player. See, like, I don't, I don't see that, and see, that's where I push back on people with see, like I said, and I'm not a big Dallas Cowboy like defender. I'm really not. Like I said, I mean, anybody who truly pays attention to anything I post or tweet, I'm sure they know that. Facts. But I, yeah. I don't agree with like that they don't have sympathy for those. I mean, my little brother got paid after being injured. Okay, we saw D Law same thing. D Law was dealing with an injury, had a great year, kind of dealt with an injury, got his contract. We see right now uh, how long they. I mean, Layton was a phenomenal. Linebacker, but Layton probably should have retired last year just for like his health reasons. So how they kept Layton and held him on. They drafted an injured linebacker with um, Jalen. I mean, they, like I said, it was a, a price pick or a price conservative pick because, of course, without that injury that he sustained in that bowl game, he was probably top five. But they still took a linebacker in the second round that was dealing with an injury that we didn't see for a full year because we didn't know if he'd even play again. And now there's talks that they might draft the running back from Texas. Again, a guy coming from injury. So I think they're very sympathetic to injuries. We got Diggs coming off an injury, same thing. And I don't we, we have heard nothing bad, which we should hear nothing bad spoken about Diggs, but he's dealing with his injury, and we didn't hear anybody try to bring his up his name bad up. I actually think they're very sympathetic to their their injured players, especially the guys that have put in work for them. It's the other ones now that, like I said, the guys that are like in the second year, maybe the guys that was on the team that they didn't draft or that they picked up and drafted, maybe they're not as nice with them. But as far as the guys that they drafted that truly put in work for Dallas, man, I truly believe Dallas takes care of those guys in the long run. What I was what I was kind of saying is like, if that's a if they kind of like like a situation like Michael Gallup, right? Michael Gallup got hurt. They still paid him, right? Yeah, but what, saying, paid. but what I was saying is the empathy didn't come in the next season. When they when we had a bunch of, yeah, cause we had a bunch of young receivers they was trying to work. And I get you on that. And then like, but but do you feel like NG was rushed back? Or do you feel like he was yes, given time to come back? You I, think, I believe he was rushed back. Oh, basically okay. you saying you feel like they don't give them the grace after the injury. Well, no. it's, yeah, and, and it's like this is what I say. I say that players in Dallas, when you sign contracts with the Dallas Cowboys, you should protect yourself by all means necessary. That's not, that's what I'm saying. Because like if you know injury or no matter and that's just and I, I would say that's pretty much with any team but if you when you sign contracts with Dallas Cowboys they are very very concerned with that first year you know what I'm saying getting their their return on their investment that first year so that's why I was saying if I'm Dak Prescott and they and they're trying to sign me this give me this and, and listen to me anything he signs is is 100% is what he deserves and what he's what he has earned because remember this is not a contract for what they think he's going to do this is a contract from based off what he's already done OK, so this is something he's already earned. My thing is what I've seen with the Dallas Cowboys is 
they will give the say they'll make Dak Prescott highest paid quarterback, right? But then they won't give him the tools to supplement to, to support that. Like you're gonna you're gonna make him the highest paid quarterback, but then you're gonna get rid of forty percent of his offensive line. Then you then you're talking about not you don't know if you're gonna pay your your starting quarterback. I mean your starting wide receiver. Like why would you? My thing is this: if you're gonna put the natural, and then people forget that there are natural like pressures that come from having big money that people don't talk about. You know what I'm saying? I know you know, there's there's gonna be those natural pressures that Dak has from having the money anyway. And then you don't want to like make it easier for him. That's what yeah. I'm. That's why I'm saying that I see the difference between like the Kansas Cities. Like, bro, Kansas City make Patrick Mahomes the highest paid quarterback in football. And you know what they did? Went and got two new left tackles on the left and the right. Went out and just bunch and got a bunch of stuff to support that decision. So, and yeah, that's I, where you need to get angry because that that is where I do get like I guess angry with the Cowboys because we don't see any of those things added. We don't see those pieces when they pay Dak because then we hear, well, Dak's getting paid too much or that we got money to this guy. But, to this guy. but it's then it's like it's like, well, what is the difference between the way Dakota's contract was structured versus Jalen Hurts or Pat Mahomes or this? Because Jalen Hurts' cap hit, although he's making more money than Dakota, is under fifty million dollars until twenty twenty nine. It's like, how did you do that? You know, we, and then the same thing with, um, what's his name, Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson's cap hit this year, I think, is almost $6 million more than Dax. He but getting guaranteed talking, money. Yeah, and nobody's talking about in Cleveland how they don't have money to make moves or keep Miles Garrett happy or bring in these pieces. So it's like, if you're going to be upset with the contract, it's like we need to be upset with, for whatever reason how these contracts are structured, where these cap hits place in or where that goes. And again, I'm not an agent. I don't, I'm not claiming to be smart enough to even have the education to understand what goes into that. But what I don't get is like it seems like every, t every other 31 teams in this NFL, some way or another, the cap doesn't matter to them or it doesn't exist. Exactly. You know, it doesn't exist when they need a player. But for us, we seem to always could use a player, but we never have the money to get one. I got to ask this question, though, because I'm looking at it. West Coast brought up a good topic where he said, you know, Dak will be marrying the Cowboys, too. That's what the contract is. It's, it's, it worked both ways. So I'm sitting back thinking, like, I would love to know how Dak feel about some of these moves. Because, you know, mm -hmm. we do have a lot of people that speculate different ways about Dak Prescott, is he a company man? Is he a, is he a stand-up guy? My argument, I say I believe he stand up because I don't think men will follow a company guy like they follow Dak. But I do want to know, like, what you think about how Dak probably sees some of these moves because we sit back like, uh, I wonder how Dak feel about letting Tyra Smith get out the building. You know what I'm saying? I wonder how Dak feel about letting Amari Cooper go. Like, is is. I guess what I'm asking is, is do you feel like he's more of a spectator or do he got some say so in some of these moves or something? That's a that's a good question for for me, Alabama. And I swear to God, I wish I could answer for you. <laughs> I wish I could answer for you because at times I go to my little brother and I the same thing. I'm like you, I'm like, do you say these things? Do you ask these things? And that's what he tells me. Like he really he is such a stand-up guy that he truly tries to separate himself from that business part in all fashions of it. Like I said, if he if he has a gal or something like that or you know, there's a big event for the Cowboys and him and Jerry Jones started to be in face to face. Of course, they have their face to face. They have a, a good relationship outside of the business. And I'm not saying the business relationship is bad. I'm just saying when it comes to business decisions, he has an entire team that he lets handle that. So, I mean, but if you're going to sit here and ask a guy who immediately had chemistry with Amari Cooper, who Amari Cooper was at his house almost every other day playing chess with me, playing chess with our uncle, hanging out with our friends, going through oh, the route with him, running routes. Does he, did he, was he a little upset when that guy was let go? I'm, I'm willing to say yes on that. Yeah. Was he a little bit upset when his best friend to one found out, you know, that he was losing him? I know he was upset by that, but again, he's upset at the part of that he's losing great pieces and great friends. But at the same time, he'll tell you, man, I understand it's a business it's and a they got to do what they got to do. The same thing with Dalton. Dalton was also one of those Cooper guys. That's what I'm telling you, man. Like these guys will tell you, you've never heard anybody come out and say anything bad about Dak. Guys that play with him now are guys that have moved on. No. Mark Cooper could have, could have went on a shit show of Dak. If, if half the things about Dak were true, were true. Dalton Schultz went straight to Houston and didn't say anything bad about the code. Those guys were at his house all the time. CDs at his house all they the time. They actually talk <laughs> bad about Dallas. Yeah, you feel <laughs> Cole, Cole Beasley talking great about Dak right now. 
and, and that's <laughs> what I do. And, and that's what I do. I talk bad about Dallas, and I don't necessarily talk about that about Dallas the franchise. I talk bad about the fans that come at me crazy because again, when you see these guys, man, like I said, I've been to Halloween parties with these guys. These guys are true friends, especially his offensive guys, his receivers, his running back, his tight ends, his practice squad tight ends. These guys are at the house running routes two, three hours, and then afterwards we're having crawfish bowls, we're having sit downs, we're playing cards. Like these are real friendships being built. And I mean, I'm, I mean, I'll tell you, shit. I was mad when Amari left. I'm still mad. Amari okay. in Cleveland. Like, why yeah. is Amari in Cleveland? He's mad. He's in Cleveland. You know, I was mad when we let said go to Miami. It's like, yeah. why, why we let Amari in? Say, see, and that's the one time that I did get real pissed off is that we let Amari Cooper and said Wilson go. We replaced him with two guys that never touched the field. I can't even remember the guy's name from Pittsburgh that we brought over, but I know he never touched the field. See, that's where that's where it really makes you frustrated because we know that Dak is a real competitor. He want to win. He ready to do whatever for the team. But it seems like it be moments where, like, Dak, we might need you to stand on the table for this guy. Like, don't let this guy go out of here, man. Because I, I really feel like he do got a voice in there. He got to. He, he the quarterback. They got to listen to something he got to say. You see what I'm saying? So it seemed like times at times we'd be like, bro, Dak, come on, man. Fight for this one. You know what I'm saying? But like you said, it's only so much power he got to have because at the end of the day, Dak can't do nothing about his negotiation in his contract. He can't do nothing about that. But he can mention like, hey, I would like to keep this guy around. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, not with you, but and then but what they go straight to with Lamar? We can't pay you twenty million a year, and then straight every wide, every wide receiver contract after that exceeded twenty million plus. Yeah, and hey, and Dad, I'm gonna tell you this right now, man. You my homeboy, man. We friends, man. I'm a, I'm never gonna tell you to take you to take, take some money that's gonna devalue you, bro. Friends just don't do that, friend. You know yeah. what I'm saying? If if, if the, hey, if we can't work at the same Walmart no more, we just can't work. I'll come hey, by your really? spot. We kick it in the parking lot. You know what I'm saying? Hey, but you gotta do what you gotta do, Dad, because you got kids, man. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. what that's what real friends really like. I would never tell my friends to take less money for the Dallas Cowboys. I just would not like. Jerry just put on a whole new armoire on the back. <laughs> and you, like, it just, and it's like, you got to think. They be doing the sweets right now. Yeah, and think about this. If you're, if you're in, your friends also know the fights that you're in with the organization. You know what I'm saying? I remember Ezekiel Elliott said something that was very, very powerful. When he was talking about his time in, Co in Cabo, he said, hey, did anybody, you know, reach out to you? He said, you know, you know, a really important person on the team player reached out to me and said, Stay in Cabo as long as possible. Like, I wonder who that was. You know what I'm saying? Great friends. You know, friends are going to support friends' good decisions, man. And that's like, if you were making those decisions, like Amari Cooper, like, I get it. If I was in, in, in the crazy, crazy thing about Amari Cooper, backstory, they tried to say we ain't had no money. As soon as Amari Cooper got there, first thing he did, what'd he do? Restructure his Restructure contract. Restructure his deal. $5 million. That was all by Suda. That was not true. We already know that. But, hey, but I will say this. Listen. If Dak, because sometimes, you know, sometimes you only got two, two, you only got one or two good fights. You know what I'm saying? If Dak can't fight the fight of players and all that other stuff, I get it. You know what I'm saying? Lead that to them. But I just want, I want to know how much fight do you, you know, because you know your brother's person, you know his personality, right? And you know him. I want to know, like, in not necessarily just the play calling, but the offense it, itself. Do you still feel that this is an offense, and just think of your brother's personality, who he is, what this offense is, how much of this offense is really your brother, and how much of this is us kind of like still, because when I see Patrick Mahomes, you know what I see? Everything, like listen, everybody on the Patrick Mahomes offense is a benefit to him. Because he's the one throwing you the ball. He's the one you got to block. Everything is balanced off of him. I want to know what do you, you see this offense? You know your brother's de 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 um, demeanor. How much of this offense is your brother, man? I mean, I think it's all him. I mean, I really do. Like I said, I, I see, especially during the season, you see, I mean, I won't see my brother until game days during the season sometimes because of how much work he spends with Mike McCarthy going over the stuff he likes, what he wants to do. And then I think a lot of people tend to forget because they were so ready and willing for whatever reason to get rid of Kellen. Like they forget this was Dak's first year under shot. This was a whole new offense. Right. Like nobody talks about that. Like this was an entire new offense that he had to come out there and learn. And you saw how Grady put in it. So like I said, how if, if this offense wasn't a hundred percent him last year, I guarantee it is this this year. I was just about to say. Yeah, because it don't take him two years to learn something like that. I promise I was just about to say in comparison. 
from what we seen from some of the, you know, from some of the frustrating moments we had with Kellen Moore, I think that's interesting, like the way you spoke to the uh relationship that him and Mike McCarthy got, because I Mike Ben said that this is Dak Prescott's offense. Now, mm-hmm. this is the first year that he's been under this offense, though. Like tech. Yeah. And they really robbed us from a for a couple of years because it's supposed to be what his fourth year, honestly. You should have mm-hmm. let Mike call the plays when he first got here. We probably would be having a masterful offense by now. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But that is interesting. Could you give us your, a little insight about, you know, Dak Prescott relationship that he got with Mike McCarthy, what you can get from him? Oh, man, he lo- he loves Mike. Him and Mike love each other, period. I mean, they play jokes on each other if he catches. I mean, we pulled up at the facility one day, and, I mean, he was going to see if Mike's truck was unlocked because I think he was going to try to figure out if he could move it somewhere else. Like, I mean, <laughs> I mean, and we'll just be sitting there chilling, and you'll see it on his phone, Coach Mike. Like, Mike McCarthy's talking about this. He's talking about this. I mean, they talk about anything and everything, and it's not just football. I mean, again, uh, honestly – I hate to say it, I'll admit, like, I'm, I'm almost 95% sure Mike McCarthy knew my little brother was expecting a child before I did. And I mean, like, that's how yeah. close they are. And again, it's not it's not that I felt like spite of that, but again, people forget that those men aren't just together on Sunday for those four hours. Yeah. Like I said, I don't see my brother some days during the season because he leaves his house at 6 a.m. and he doesn't get home till 8 p.m. And I can promise you from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., Mike McCarthy's in the building with him. Shadi's in the building with him. So that's how close these guys are. Those guys, that's that's their second family. At times, it's their first family. So for them to be as close as they are, like I said, they they really are close. It's interesting you brought up Shadi though, because I ain't gonna oh, lie, us as Cowboy that's fans, listen, please that's speak about him, because us as Cowboy fans, we like what is Shadi? We don't, we don't really know what much. Do? About, we don't really know much much about him. And I, what I, is I he doing? You, if you put him in a lineup, the average Cowboy fan wouldn't know who he was and if he worked for the Cowboys. Man, Schottenheimer, that that's my guy. Like I truly enjoy that guy. Like I said, I, and I loved Kellen. Like I said, Kellen and I had our conversations, but it's like when you see Shadi, it's like. Like you said, man, if you line him up and you just had a conversation with him, you wouldn't know he was a coach unless you were as educated as he is to speak that football with you. Other than that, Shotty fixing to pull you out there. If you got a basketball court, which Dak has, I was like, that's what he and I were doing. We're out there having three-point contests. He's out there yeah. joking with his fellas, calling his teammates out. I guarantee I'm fixing to bust your ass. Like, he's going <laughs> to okay. do it. Shotty got a little Shotty one of the him. guys, huh? Yeah, Shotty got, and Shotty got a real jumper on him. Like, he's right. he going he to turn that hat backwards, and he's ready to go to work. Like, he's really one of the fellas. He really is. That's what's up. Like, I got a couple of more questions, man. I seen a couple of – let me know if I'm right or wrong because, you know, the media is is very facetious. You know, they, they, they'll they get you. The headlines will get you. Let me know if these quotes – one of these quotes is right. I know I I know I know seen you say Jalen Hurts was a running back. Did you say <laughs> – I seen you say that. He was I RB1. That, I said that, <laughs> and I, I'm not going to necessarily say I stand by that because yeah. i was poking fun again i am a i am a quarterback cowboy fan, fan they, yeah they get i mean yeah you know i'm a cowboy fan they gave me a little opportunity to poke hey, everybody explain eagles. yourself saying nothing bad about the yeah. eagles don't even, don't <laughs> even. You know, that's what i'm saying you know so i poked at the eagles when they gave me an opportunity you know I, I again i give that man all the credit in the world he is the face of the eagles he's he's earned his way up there but in my true opinion he's a one read quarterback and i've been saying Sex. that i've been Sex. saying that and when Jalen comes off his first read, it's tuck and go, it's tuck and go again. And you saw that as much as with this year because, uh, excuse me, the rookie quarterback in Indianapolis was having a great year before he got injured because Rich, that – Yeah. Yeah, Risky, because who's their head coach now? The former OC of Philly. When they mm-hmm. when they got their new OC, he had to learn new offense. Things got it became more of a read. I know Brian Johnson. Brian Johnson was Dak's quarterback coach at Mississippi State. He's more of a, a read type offense. You saw that kind of disconnect start happening. You saw him and AJ Brown start having uh, their fights on the sideline. You saw his. I mean, he had the most turnovers he's had as a starter this season. So I mean, that's where I went with that. Like I said, I mean, if you compare his best year, and again, that's uh, that's something else I don't want to take away from him, but. When you people try to say all that and they try to shit on Dak or whatever and try to put Dak below this, it's like y'all are holding Jalen one year above Dak's consistent years of work. Like Dak's never had a losing record. And even if you were to take Jalen's best year where you had him at the MVP, hold that next to Dak's rookie year. It They're almost identical. Right. If Dak's not in better stack, the only part that Jalen outleads Dak is he has six more rushing touchdowns than Dak. So if you want to get mad at me for calling the man a running back, you can. I, but – that's just my, again, it's my, hey, them my, them my sentiments exactly. You yeah. Know. 
<laughs> hey man, I'm a t- I'm a, I, I need to know, man, because I know a, f- a lot of fans and not just and just even myself, man, like, you know, Cowboys came out with this thing. They said, you know, you know, Jerry Jones and, you know, Dak Prescott, they've, you know, he actually they didn't technically say Dak Prescott. And that's why I had to you got to when these ever headlines come out, you got to like really read them. Then you got to read them again. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Because the headline says, you know, the Dallas Cowboys they feel that it's mutually agreeable that they're just going to play this 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 season out on this one year deal worth fifty nine million dollars. And I'm like, when I first heard it, I was like, Dag, why would you agree to that? Why? What's I'm thinking in my head? I'm like, wait, time out. They said the Cowboys is two people in this is relationship. Because I'm thinking like, how would you know? And, and it, whether he agreed to it or not, but I'm still thinking like. I was always Charles Barkley said this this quote to me, and, he, and I didn't for me he said it to the nation. He said, "Great players, there's no benefit on playing on one year deals." You know what I'm saying? Now he said that ten years ago, and players weren't making no fifty nine million dollars. <laughs> it's a totally different world. But still, if I'm the Joneses, I'm looking at myself like the last time we had a quarterback on a one year deal worth anything over twenty five thirty million dollars, he played five games. And that was guaranteed. Then you put yourself in a position to lose that quarter, to, to lose that. Because I'm gonna tell you this right now. Look in the camera right now. I'm gonna tell you, you're dumb if you don't think that there is a team lining up right now to take your quarterback as soon as he's available next year. Yeah, it is. It's several of them actually. And I've, and I've made videos. And and I've made, I'm reading these. I'm reading y'all's things every now and then. Somebody, I don't know if they're talking to me or you, talking about stop selling Dak to the Cowboy fans. He's done in Dallas. I've said it on my Twitter. If that's how y'all feel. If that's how the Jones feel. Fuck it. Like I, you know, I shall say it. Like I'm good with it. Like I said, I'm the Dallas, the city of Dallas, the organization of Dallas has been great to both my family and my brother. But if if they decide to send him somewhere else, if, if y'all fans really want him going. I remember again, I was a cowboy hater. I remember what y'all looked like before Romo. I remember what y'all looked like even a few games with Romo. So I know the gaps there were. So, you know, we can play that whole game. Oh, if he was with another team, he, he would win this, he'd win that. Everybody can say that about their player. But I mean, truly, y'all, y'all would be so upset if that Demarcus wears y'all, Anthony Hitchens, y'all, all these great mm. players that we had in our building that yeah. left and won a Super Bowl somewhere else. Y'all would be sick and back in my inbox, mad at me, talking about, I can't believe you made your brother leave. I can't believe you made your brother hate Dallas. No, I didn't do this shit. You did it. Exactly. So, so that's where it is. I was just about to oh, add that. that That's a perfect segue to the question I had. This man is officially cooking. I just want to let y'all yeah, know. he the is. The kitchen is, about to, the kitchen is officially open. And we're going to keep it right there on that same dish. I was going to ask you, gut feeling, do you look at this like a last dance for Dak in Dallas? Man, I, I I do and I don't, uh, Bama, because I'm 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 really in a situation where I'm stuck. I mean, I'll be honest with you guys, I'm normally like I'm not a hundred percent in the loop, like with all this information coming out, but I have a pretty good loop. And before all this, my loop was letting me know, and like I said, my loop is is up there. Like I, some of them fuckers on uh, FS1 and ESPN was telling me, bro, this deal's done. This deal's done. Hey, they just gonna push it past. Uh, you know, I think the mark, the February tenth deadline, or this and that. And here's the reasons why. Hey, we're writing an article about the Cowboys. You know, signing that, but they are gonna do it after this. And then, you know, you, you started the news at West Coast. There was like, oh, well, they gonna go on this last dance thing, and they gonna do this. And then, so I reached out to a few of them. Like, what's up? And they're like, oh no, bro, it's still good. Like, trust me, the deal's gonna get done. And now they're in limbo where they don't know. So, you know, and, and Dak still says, you know, of course, Dak wants to be a Dallas Cowboy. So, you know, his mindset is the deal is going to get done. And I don't think he's heard anything other than that. Um, but, you know, for me, I'm all for it. Like I said, I, I support that kid 100 percent. So if he's a Dallas Cowboy for life, I'm a Dallas Cowboy for life. I know a lot of you people listen to this. Probably, that probably just pissed y'all off that y'all might have to look at me for the rest of the time. <laughs> Dak's in Dallas or whatever. But if he leaves, like you said, man, there's other teams. Like you said, you're stupid as fuck. If you don't think there are other teams out here that want my brother, and I can prove that by the fact that just go listen to other players in this NFL like Najee Harris. Najee Harris was interviewed after the season where they asked him who gets more, who gets the most hate in the NFL. Without hesitation, that man named a quarterback on another team that wasn't his. <laughs> named his stats, named how often he wins, and said there aren't other 32 guys like that in this league. He's directly speaking about his team 
at that point, whether he said the quarterback on his team or not. Man. He's directly telling you, I want a guy like Dak. I wish I had a guy like Dak in, in fucking Man. Pittsburgh. So for you to be out here thinking that there aren't guys out here, Sean Payton said a few years ago when he was still in New Orleans, uh, I had to pull in and I wish I had it for this. I wish I knew that we were going to talk about this. When Drew Brees was trying to figure out if he was going to stay or retire, and they were pushing Dak through the franchise tag, they had an interview with Sean Payton said, I'm waiting to see what happens with the quarterback in Dallas. Like, I ain't going to lie. That's that's one place. I would never want to see it, but that's one place that sound like it'll New work. Orleans? Oh, yes. trust me. I used to be against yes. our brother Jace. Our brother Jace was a huge New Orleans fan, and then people started sending me these outfits of him in New Orleans. I'm like, oh, he kind of look good in that black. I'm you know? telling you, I, I can see thinking, it. Like, he's from, we're from Louisiana. Yep. That's the scene. And then not only that, he played football in Mississippi. Every Mississippi don't have an NFL team. So it's split just like they are with Mississippi State and Ole Miss. They're split between Tennessee and New Orleans Saints. So he's immediately going to receive that love. And I know people tell me right. that with the Dallas fans all the time. They're like, oh, well, there's crazy fans in every fan base. I know that. And again, I haven't experienced it from the other 31. But, bro, I be getting some wild shit from y'all. Like, <laughs> it's, a lot of us. it's a lot of us, Tad. We can't, we can't be responsible for some of them. Though, no, know? I know. And that's why I don't hold on. And that's why when I, when I speak, when I type, I try to be very specific and to the point. And, and somehow the, the, the tree still gets lost in the forest because everybody reads my words and then they go to making their own statements, their own beliefs out of it. I'm like, guys, I'm not somebody to hold my tongue. I am the oldest of three boys raised by a single mother who was put in charge of her household at a young age. Like I speak the way I feel. I'm not going to bite my tongue. I'm not going to try to make you feel good about it because one, I'm not trying to keep up with a lie. So like, exactly. what's coming out of my mouth is the fucking truth that you can take it for how it is or how it isn't. So like I said, when I say what I say on Twitter, I mean it. If I was to ever call out a player, I mean it. But I'm honestly in a situation where I don't need or want to do that because I know the limelight that's on me. So I don't have to blast a player for other people to say it. And nine nine times out of ten, I'm going to see that player way more than anybody who's going to read my tweet and be like, oh, I can't believe Tad said this. And these guys here in Dallas know they know me. They know TP. They know Tad. Like West Coast say, they know I will tell them how I'm feeling about them. And I've never had a bad conversation with anybody on this team, man. They're all love. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, and this and this is this is what I always say about the Dallas Cowboys is like, you know, the first rule in the game is protect thyself. You know what I'm saying? But it's like the Dallas Cowboys, they make it look obvious, bro. <laughs> they make it obvious, like in the in the in the in the in the, in the football season, it's team like a mug. It's mm -hmm. the team. You know, you know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna tell you. I did an experiment. I did an experiment. I want you to Google Micah Parsons right now. Just Google mm -hmm. Micah Parsons. Just Google oh, the Bro, I was going to bring this up. Nothing ne there is nothing positive no. for at least three nothing. pages. And I'm going to tell you, most of the stuff is coming from Dallas. <laughs> 103 The Fan. See, there it is. There, that's what you about to – that's what I was trying to get up. 103 The Fan. See, again, when we read these things, besides – I don't think Jerry Jones has ever gone on TV and lied, like, especially not intentionally. Like, I think Jerry Jones goes on there and says exactly what he means and what he feels. And I think if there was a case where Jerry Jones felt like this was the last year for he and Dak, I think we would have truly heard it out of Jerry's mouth already. I think it is the Dallas media, whether it's 103.5 The Fan or whoever it is, that pushes these. And it only seems to happen when these superstars are up for their money. Again, when Dak was here, Dak was not supposed to replace Romo, and then he did. And, oh, he's the next paid man. He's the rookie of the year. Look how great and fantastic this guy is. And then he hits that time where it's time to pay him. And it's like, okay, I've done everything right to get paid. Well, I don't know. Now Dallas is saying this. Again, we never heard Jerry say this. It was always the reports. Dallas is saying, Dak, we don't know about Dak. Dak, we don't know about this. And now it's Micah. Same thing. For the first two, three years of Micah's career, all we heard is he's the second coming of Lawrence Taylor. He's this. He's that. He's a walking Hall of Famer. He's this. Now it's time to pay the man, and it's, well, Dallas doesn't know if they're sick of my, uh, Micah's attitude and Micah's antics in Dallas. And it's like, what, what, when have we heard anybody say Mike, Micah was a bad teammate? I've hung out with Micah. I've seen the way Micah hangs out with his teammates. Micah plays basketball. He goes bowling with his teammates. He goes and watches a movie with his teammates. When has anybody ever come out and said they had a problem with Micah's attitude? And now we get these anonymous sources anonymous. out here that Mike is a problem. Like, bro, again, it always seems to happen around with these superstars and when it's time for them to get their money. Hey, I take campaign right? and hire guns. That's what that's what this, I look at them like. This is the best core of Cowboys stars they've ever had. 
bro. There's nobody getting in trouble. Everybody's going to practice. Everybody's kissing and smiling. Knock and on wood for a minute. I'm just saying, even if even if like you had a one off here and there, if you will look at your core stars back in the 90s, it was your core stars that were getting in trouble. You know what I'm saying? Michael Irvin. What the hell you got at the White House? Man? Oh, Playmaker he told me to my face. He's so good that they didn't have social media when he was playing. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, been out of the league. <laughs> hey, late, about 3 o'clock in the morning, Google Michael Irvin in the White House, and then you thank me later. You know what I'm saying? Crazy story. Crazy story. You know what I'm saying? He told Jerry Jones he was trying to do a right thing. He was trying to do the, a right thing by something very wrong. You know what I'm saying? Look at a really good story, though. But, you know, this is a, like... That's why I be saying, like, bruh, like, your quarterback don't do nothing but hang out with his girl and his kid, and that's it, and, and, and regulatory stuff. Your 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 C.D. Lamb, who knows? The, the craziest thing you've seen when C.D. Lamb is a is a moment at the draft where he took a phone. Yeah. <laughs> that's the craziest yeah. thing. Micah Parsons is with his kid. Listen to me. If Micah Parsons is on the field, you know, I know you could probably find out most of the time where Micah Parsons is. You want to know why? Because he's either on live podcasting or he's on live playing Madden like bro these dudes are not they're like for the first time Jerry got that aspect right because you got high quality individuals who give you high quality talent I'm gonna be honest with you I'm from the hood that's not how it usually works mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying so that's why I say man you got this deep this is what you want to market bro Jack is the guy you want to be the face of your franchise why because he's going home every night bro he that not is a model citizen, like. like I ain't gonna lie. Like, if All you was to say Romo did far, doesn't do far as an example, as a as a young black quarterback in the league, man, Dak is he's that guy. Like he he got pretty much a, a squeaky clean image. I don't know how you pull it off. <laughs> like and, got, and again, like you said, all these guys you're talking about. Uh, they're in Dallas. Like, I don't think people understand how big of a true party city Dallas is. Nice. Yeah. And again, like you said, these guys, again, that you named them, Trey Diggs with his son, Micah with his kid, Dak with SJ and his little girl. Like, even before that, at Rangers games, at, back at Mississippi State at their games. Like, it's a very boring see, life. For a yeah, quarter. When you see Dak on social media, you see Dak on social media either enjoying himself, enjoying himself in the context that I just said at a ball game or something like that, or you see him on his platform boosting our foundation. Like, yeah. even with these other guys. Doing some charitable. Yeah, or so you see Micah, he's doing the same thing. He's on his podcast. He's boosting his sites. They're doing, they're working in their community. And with social media, all these phones everywhere, trust me, these guys can't walk down the street without somebody doing this. These so boys on eggshells, man. Yeah, if they were really out here in these streets doing anything, you would It'll hear about everywhere. it. And that's what I'm saying, bro. They're, they're all models. And you got, and that's even going back to Zeke. And I mean, people forget Zeke was drafted at 20 years old. He had that one little incident. And then again, whether you want to say his relationship with Dak, just him growing up or whatever, because he was always with Dak, especially after that incident. That's where that outside leadership comes. That shows maturity. Because like you said, Dak is the old head now. So all these guys look up to him. Like I said, when Dak was coming to league, it was he was following those guys' league, and Witten wasn't going clubbing. Romo wasn't going clubbing. Like that was dinner at Nick and Sam's, back to the house. So what were we? What was our little routine when Dak started starting? Dinner at Nick and Sam's. You have a few drinks there. Yes, he's back at the house. And like I said, now that that's their routine. They might have dinner together once a week. I know he has dinner with his lineman once a week, and then these guys are with their families, and they're at the house. That's wonderful, man. That's great leadership. Like you said, I really don't think the Cowboys like West Coast brought up. I don't think they get enough credit for that these days, man. Real talk. Because mm -hmm. if you was a longtime Cowboy fan, man, we know we used to be like, oh, Lord, it's summertime. We already feel it coming. Like somebody going to do something. Like we like, Lord, just don't let it be too bad. Like mm -hmm. we already know somebody going to jail, somebody getting a charge. It was always something going mm -hmm. on in dallas and that that culture has changed though i will give them some credit for that and that's that's very that's a great thing to say for dallas of mm -hmm. course yeah and you got to remember like you know you know people be like oh you know this happens on the sidelines i'd be like yo take this take the cameras off the sidelines like you should be able to cuss your coach out on the sidelines he should be able to coach you out on the side that just happens but it's a professional yeah. sports you know what i'm saying like it's more than just a ring on the line it's millions of dollars you know what i'm saying so they should be able to have a safe place where they can have their arguments and stuff like that. Just stop putting the camera on there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it's like what these dudes do on the, the outside world 
bruh, there's there's 50 million cameras. If you're in a if put it like this, if if you are at a club with 1500 people, just 1500 cameras <laughs> all <Yeah>. of 4k <laughs> like everything is recorded in and the 60 of them are pointed to the section that the the celebrities in. Exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and think about it probably more than that as soon as they recognize it as you everything is on you and it's like the fact that the dallas cowboys have minimized that and they're still putting out a good product like for the most part like i guess i get it we didn't win the super bowl you know what i'm saying but we're still putting out a high end product like that. That does show a lot to the quality of players that they have in Dallas. And that is the culture that you do want. Yeah, that's the culture that you want in Dallas. You know what I'm saying? We just need to find a way to propel and get past that that next that next step. Hey, before we get out of here, man, Tad, I want to man, I'm going to ask you a straight fan question. Straight fan question, man. Yes, straight sir. fan question. We win the Super Bowl 2024, man. <laughs> Man, you put me on the spot, bro. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> because as a fan, hell yeah. as a fan, and that's what I tell people all the time, I'm both a fan and a realist. As a fan, you find your right, we're going to win the Super Bowl. Right, as a go. realist, we got to go. play was... off the line, 50% of our backfield. We, uh, even though we got Kendrick as a linebacker, we still got to get younger. Hopefully, Overshawn can come back healthy and strong. But I, 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 like I said, man, we still do got 88 out there. We got Cooks. And, again, this is going to be Dak's second year with Cooks. We saw how their, their chemistry started to bend, especially towards the back end of the season. So, like I said, I think Tolbert's going to be a great pickup. Ferguson, too, like the connection chemistry Ferg has. Ferg is truly going to be the next Kelsey. Like, I don't I don't want to – and I'm talking about – because he is real deal with that. Like, Ferg is that guy. Was that guy? We love Wisconsin. Ferg. We love Oh, bro, Ferg. I love Ferg in Wisconsin. I love Ferg with Dallas. And I love Ferg as a person. That, like, again, another one of the most funniest human beings – Real hmm. like man, God, one of the what boys, position did you play before you got what position you played? Oh, DN and see, like, and hmm. I'll make you laugh real quick because I played DN. I actually finished my, my senior season with 23 sacks. I got all my love. Okay, okay. But, you know, I loved women and stuff too much that I, I messed it up going to college. <laughs> you know he was Dak, good. That's how you know he was good with those type of problems. Uh -huh. <laughs> then when Dak got me around these guys, like I met matter of fact, Tyron Crawford texted me today. When he got me around these guys, and I'm looking at him like we played the same position. Yeah, I was never gonna make it. You yeah. know, so I'm not even tripping. You know, like yeah. I'm glad I told and Tyrone, you. Tyrone, smaller uh, defensive uh, end. He he a Ooh. little smaller. Crawford. Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. He and he he was in the, the gym the other day talking about spot me with three fifteen. How many how many you going for? I'm going for ten. All right, bet. He made me spot him on the tip, and they're gonna jump up talking about your boy done got weak since retirement. I said, man, you don't get the hell out of my face, bro. What are you talking about? <laughs> Oh, Ted, I used to do 405. Yes, yeah, now you're just talking to talk, Ty. You talk, get out of my face, bro. Yeah, that was interesting what you said about Ferd. Did you get a chance to look at John Stevens Jr., the uh, mm -hmm. the undrafted guy coming out? He yeah, he was, he, yeah, he got hurt last year, man. I think he can um be a big-time piece of this I'm, offense if he get a chance. I may have. What number is he? 49. He was 49, well, was 49 in count. Right? Yeah, he yeah, got yeah, hurt he, real he, early. Yeah, yeah. 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 And like they, he, he, like he, school marker. I still, I still like hinder shot, man. We got a lot of tight ends. Like I said, I love, I love Dalton. Like I said, I mean, I see why he went and got his bag. Like I said, because our tight end room is really legit. Like we got some real deal tight ends. And I think we probably need to go back, especially with the lack of the run game that we had last year. Like we need to go back to more of those two and three tight end sets because. Oh, you the, see Spoon the, taking a jump. That would it sound like. Who? School marker. Like. Yes. I see Spoon taking a jump because I think he'll be utilized more in this offense, but. I don't know how big of a jump it will be because I'm telling y'all, if y'all thought Ferg took a leap last year, Ferg Ferg's going off pro this year. Like Ferg is going to be on Ferg going to go back. in. I love it. I love I mean, it. He has been. I mean, think about the tight ends Dak has had. I mean, you saw he had Witten towards the back end of his career, but how well him and Witten did. You saw how well him and Schultz. I mean, uh, oh, why, why did I just go blank? What was my Blake boy? Jar Jar, big Jar. Like you saw, like him and Jarwin were there. He got Jarwin paid, and then. When Jarl went down, everybody's like, oh, what is Dalton going to do? And you saw how quick Dak and Jal Dalton connected. I'm telling you, Ferg is one of those guys. When Dak says, hey, we're at the house throwing, Ferg is there. Like, Ferg is going to be one of the first ones there to show up, one of the last ones to leave. And I'm telling you, like, and I just love his de his demeanor, everything. Like, you know, like in that playoff game, getting their ass whooped, Ferg had huge catches, touchdown. What did Ferg do? Ferg jumped up, gave the ball to the ref, like, we're still losing. Let's get back out here and grind. And I just love everything about Ferg. I'm telling you, he's going he's gonna to be an all-pro this year. Hey man, um, before we get up out of here, because I mean, you know, time is the essence. But I want to say this real quick, man, because I made this. I was, I was always thinking about this. You always see quarterbacks go through this transition, like even Tony Romo. Like 
You saw Tony Romo as a player, a single man, no responsibilities doing his thing. And when Tony Romo got with Miss Cannon, start popping out them babies, man, Tony Romo turned into something else. That's when you start seeing the little, the little, the little. <laughs> you hear me? Oh, no, I said it already. I said the, the, the determination that my brother had, bro, that my niece. Oh my God. Talk to bro. me, man. Talk to me, man. Like Folks niece, don't be understanding, I, I told, bro. I've told everybody that I said for the, the way he pushed, like truly the way he, that man pushed himself all those times. Like, I like to, I, I mean, I know he says it was, it's for his family, so I know I play some role in that, but that's him. Like, he pushes himself to the brink of exhaustion because it's for him. He knows the kind of man he wants to be, the kind of player he wants to end up being. And now you hear him when he talks about his daughter. What does he say? Now I have somebody else that I want all the same things I've ever wanted for myself in. So oh, I'm telling nice. y'all, like, bro, she's, I've already said it. Like, the fact that she's on this earth now. Yeah, you ask, ask me the Super Bowl question again. I'm sorry. Remind me that I got a niece now. Named after my mama, my, my add you, and ask me again if my brother going to win the Super Bowl this year. Sweet, he's going to win the Super Bowl this year. Oh, yes, sir. And it ends in what number? 2024. I think a four is on his chest. I think we just going to keep, like, what did you say earlier? In the show? Right. We got manifestation. 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 Yes, sir. Hey, I absolutely I love it. Hey, I absolutely love it, man. We're going to let you up out of here, but I need you to do me a favor when you talk to your brother, man. I need you to do me a favor, right? I got you. Tell him to go back to the bow tie. Just for just for this year. Nah, I like this day. No, no, I like no, this day. No, 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 this, no, no, this no. dark side deck, this, nah, bro. We look at a dark side this deck. Is dark side, <laughs> this is dark side deck. This dark side. I think deck. I, I think that's what I told everybody, man. Like, cause like one of the one of the like knocks I had on my brother, like the only knock I've ever had on my brother when he came when he first got into the league was like, man, when he throws the ball, even though it's accurate, it's getting there. It's like you don't leave his hand like it leaves Aaron Rodgers' hand. Don't leave his hand like it leaves these guys' hands. And then he started working with uh, the Queens quarterback coach, John Beck, and all that changed. And I'm telling you, that's when the bow tie got dropped, bro. When he, <laughs> hey, when he knew hey, I, could put this, I could put this in a window this small. Yeah, now you got to see the tats. You got to see the change. Yeah, like, hey, 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 he hit him. He hit him. He hit him. He hit him. Y'all yes, been asking sir. for six years to say it with his chest. Now he's saying it with his chest. Bro. I ain't lying. Look, I seen that to this year. That's why I love the way you said that this offense is him because it feel like it is. Because I seen Dak. That's a different dude. I see. I've been watching him since he first came out. Like that's that's a different dude. Dak ain't even Dak wearing dark colors now. Like that guy used to Dak used to be a little more flamboyant with his colors now. Mm -hmm. Dak wearing yeah. black black leather coming up to the, man. Dak know who he is now, man. That's the that's the guy that's gonna take us where we need to go, man. Hey, I, I ab absolutely. Last question, I promise. Yeah, Dak's in his, in the athleticism. I know there be times where I be like, Dak, why he to run? Mm -hmm. Is that and I don't I don't want you to speak, I do not want you to speak for him for him. No, but I'm good. just saying, like, do you think the Cowboys limit? I'm just we ain't even got time to, to, to butter this yeah. question up. Are they do they limit his athleticism at time? I think I think they do, but I think he limits it to a bit because I think Dak is truly in a point in his career where he only wants to run when he has to run. And more so because, again, Dak is a quarterback. And that's why I make the fun or poke my fun at Jalen Hurts with all his rushing because one of the biggest things that has stuck with me for my entire life, I mean, I'm sure it's all y'all were, we were all big Mike Vick fans, you know. Oh, yeah. And I, and I, remember, the, I remember the interview, and, I, and I'm Dak was sitting beside me, and I'm sure it stuck with him that way too. But I remember them asking Mike Vick, what is best? Or what do you have the most fun at? Where is the best for you, throwing or running a touchdown? And Vic said it, man, it's throwing a touchdown. Everybody in the NFL can rush a touchdown. There's only so many of us that can throw one. And I think that's where it goes with Dak. And on that note, <laughs> that was gas, man. I'm glad we got one that can throw yeah. in around one. <laughs> yes, sir. There it is, man. There it is. Well, hey, man, I'm going to tell you this right now. You speak very well for yourself. Man, uh, I don't know. Maybe next year after we figure out what's going on with the contract, we'll start the podcast. But, yeah, man, definitely got to get you on air consistently, man, because you definitely got to work. I can only imagine speaking on real-world topics because, you know, they say if you speak sports, you can only speak sports. You got to, you know, shit up. No, no, man. I'm, I'm good. Educated. Educated. Yeah, see man, I, oh, I see <laughs> it. I see it. You know what I'm saying? I see it. But, hey, man, it is your boy, West Coast, man. I want to thank you for coming on here, man. I appreciate you for having this conversation, man. I think it happened in the exact moment it was supposed to happen. You know what I'm saying? We didn't have no national championship game. 
blocking us or nothing, man. We just are all gas. And I'm going to tell you this right now. We've been on here an hour and 20 minutes, and we still have over 275 people watching, man. So that right there alone tells you where these folks was and where it's at. We got some love. We got some hate because you can't get them without the you two. But I just want to thank everybody for watching, man. Tab, where, where can they follow you at on Instagram or social media? What am I? I'm at TP first Prescott, but I think my E is with a, a three now, bro. Like I got hacked a few months ago and had to switch everything up, and I don't even have my phone with the shit as I explained. To you, I <laughs> phone over the weekend, so but yeah, it's TP the number one uh, first Prescott. Please, y'all check in with me, man. West Coast anytime, bro. This was great. I truly enjoyed it. I forgot. I was supposed to get off this damn thing about 30 something minutes ago. I'm sure my wife is out there fuming, but man, anytime, <laughs> guys, anytime, I'm always willing and ready to come on. Landlord, what's up? Find you at? I already, man. Landlord from Alabama with the same handle on our social media, man. We appreciate you, Tad, man. It was a great conversation, man. We rooting for you, brother. We, You know, we want that six trophy. Yes, and I feel like Dak is super motivated. Yeah. Now, before we leave, before we leave, let me ask y'all one more question because I kind of thought about this earlier. So, say this is the last dance. Dak wins the ring. Does he sign or does he leave? Dak gonna leave if he's uh, if he win that ring. I think Dak out of here. I I'm ain't gonna lie. I see, it, I see it like this. I see it like this. It's like with Frank Lewis Lucas said when your success takes a shot at you, right? I think Dak is in a precarious situation because I feel like if Dak, I feel like Dak is gonna do what Dak does, and that's win you at least twelve to thirteen games every season, right? So with that, that's going to get you in the playoffs. Some, hey, it's going to take more than just Dak. It's going to be some luck. Some luck happened and you win a Super Bowl, right? The only thing that sucks is the Dallas Cowboys mentality. The Cowboys mentality says Dak is now too expensive. Because exactly. You like this. Because now you have something that has never happened in the history of modern sports. And this is what people keep on saying. When people keep on saying, oh, we want to win a Super Bowl. We want to win a Super Bowl. Okay, you want to win a Super Bowl, but do you understand you're going to win a Super Bowl, and then your quarterback, who will most likely be the MVP of that Super Bowl, because Dak ain't never played in a game where someone else on offense played better than him. That ain't never happened. Mm -hmm. So it's a game that he's winning. He will look like the best player on the field. Now, so time out. Let me ask this question. Hold on. Hold on. Is, hold on is, this, are we talking about this year? This year. Okay, this go year, ahead. Go this ahead. Year. He wins that Super Bowl. Now the Dallas Cowboys have to do negotiations with – an agent that they've clearly made made it obvious that they don't, because I'm going to tell you, I believe Derrick Henry didn't get a call because they got the same agent. Hey, call it whatever it is, but I believe that was a big coincidence. Um, they don't want to do deals with his agent. And then secondly, now, because you didn't sign the quarterback, you also got to talk to the, you got to wait for the Saints. You got to wait for the, for the Pittsburgh Steelers. You got to work for us, because my question is, what team doesn't want a Super Bowl champion? What team does, and even like this, if Dak Prescott, and let's just say, let's not even say he wins the Super Bowl. Let's just say this year. Let's just say this year. What team doesn't want the second MVP in all the NFL as their starting quarterback, bro? Real shit. I just want to ask this. If, if that was to happen, if Dak won the Super Bowl, right, I feel like Dak could walk in there and say, blank check me. Just give me what I want. And I feel like the Joneses' ego would be like, Nah, I'm good. Nah, we're good. And, and then this, this is gonna See, be and like, that's where, and that's like where I'm where I gonna go. And that's where I'll go. And I promise I'll I'll leave too. Because like I said, I go. But that's where I get because forget the Super Bowl. Super Bowl be great. But like you said too, West Coast, he's gonna win 13 games. He's 12, 13 games. He's gonna put you in the playoff. So for all these people that keep saying they want Dak, they want Dak going. You're gonna be picking somewhere in the 23. Where we are now. Range. Yeah, yeah. So that's where I keep asking y'all who y'all gonna replace him because I keep seeing all this Shador Sanders talk, Shador Sanders talk, and I'm not bad about the Shador at all. But if Shador is what he's supposed to be coming out, y'all talking about Jerry don't want to pay Dak. Y'all think the Jones is fixing to give up four, three to four first round picks to move from 24 to somewhere in the top five to land y'all's franchise quarterback? And then think about this, Chad. And then think about this. Then you will draft a kid that you hope is the guy who you just replace. Because it's yep. like, and my question is this. You don't want Shador Sanders to be top three in completions in the NFL. You don't want him to be top two in, in touchdown percentage. You don't want him to be top two in MVP racing. You don't you want him to be praying that he become a Dak Prescott. <laughs> exactly. So it doesn't make and sense. That's where I, and that's where I get confused with him because it's like, guys, if Dak ends up leaving for the reason he ends up deciding to leave and the Joneses don't extend him a contract and he goes and puts y'all in playoff contention, Y'all really think y'all getting a franchise guy in the top? I mean, granted, y'all got a franchise guy in the fourth round, so anything is possible. 
But to think that you're just fixing to get one at 24 or that the Joneses is fixing to give up so much capital to move in the realm to get one of these top three guys that are supposed to come out in that year. Like, yeah, I, I, like I said, that's when I'm going to really be curious to see what the messages I get. Okay, on. rapid fire question. Did Rob, did that get robbed for the MVP this year? Yes. Yes. Okay. I think Any, so. Name one other fucking quarterback that don't have a star on his helmet. That th- <laughs> th- 37 leading the NFL and don't win. Again, exactly. not to shit on Lamar because I love Lamar. Lamar has six games towards the back of his uh, season where he had one touchdown or none and still won all six games. And, and think about this. Think about this. Even if Dak doesn't win the MVP consolation prize, he should have been offensive player of the year. Yes, Dang because Dak left. still has he what, just nine, got nothing though. How do you get nothing? And he still has well, what, nine more touchdowns, nine more touchdown passes than Lamar Jackson. I think his, his completion rate was higher, his yards were more. Everything as far as the quarterback categories go, where you're concerned, Dak beat Lamar. And, and we yet, seen we seen Dak have a same season as Aaron Rodgers and didn't even make the Pro Bowl. And, it, and oh, Aaron, Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers won the MVP. You talking about <laughs> 16 or 21? Oh, he did it twice then. <laughs> did it twice. And Aaron Rodgers won the MVP with the same deck through 37 touchdowns. Aaron Rodgers threw 37. They both was like in single digits interceptions, I believe. Yep. And you know, Dak didn't even make the Pro Bowl. So the hate is real, man. The hate is real. The hate in Dallas. Oh, I trust me, if Dak leaves Dallas, that's the only thing that'll change. Is that in the eyes of Sports Center, FS1, the Stephen A. Smith, the Emmanuel Ottos. He's all of a sudden a Hall of Famer. He's somebody Dallas should have never let go. He's going to be all these things. And then I just pray for the poor kid, especially if it is Shador. Like, I wish nothing but greatness for Shador. I think the worst thing for him would be to land in Dallas. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, my God. I know, I know you're from here. I know you won your state championships in Dallas. Your daddy won Super Bowls here. But, bro, you think you, you – just call Dak and ask him what kind of pressure he deals with on a daily basis, and then ask what kind of pressure you would have as a real Cowboy legacy with that name on the back of your jersey. Man, Stephen that- Jones is not going to want to deal with Deion Sanders. <laughs> it's, not, it's not even – forget the field. Forget that the probably, field. Like, they even called Derek. Derek Henry was in Austin basically begging – and then he, you know, it's bad when you have to ask when it, when your agent tells you, "Hey, bro, we're going to Baltimore," and you be like, "The Cowboys didn't call, <laughs> right? <laughs> call." He, he checked. I got two houses. I got two houses, and I trained in Dallas, and yeah, I didn't even get a call. Derrick from. Henry, like, what you mean we going to Baltimore? They, they didn't even call. His agent, like, bro, let that go. They didn't he call. Hit, he hit the dude <laughs> on TikTok. He like. I'm right here, like my, my house right there. Well, hey, man, listen, man, I ain't going to get you in trouble because I'm going to tell you this right now, man. You ain't going to have nobody calling me. I'm in enough trouble out here, man. You don't need to be in trouble. We're going to let you out here, man. We still got over 300 people up in here, man. I'm going to tell you this right, man. They wanted the content. We gave you all the content. Hey, let me tell you this. Sometimes the truth is like a lion. If you set it free, it'll defend itself. And that's what we did today. We didn't have to defend the truth because the truth will defend itself, man. If you disagree with it, make a video on it. Other than that, you guys already know what it is. Never look down because...